I would uh, I would like to say that like uh, it's a great and benevolent institution, and I'm very particularly moved by uh, the, the statement that like the intervention in terms of uh, you know Master Moshe's uh, house come to a full circle when when KG Subramanian intervenes there. But definitely it has created its own heat and dust, we all know. But anyway, we will come to that later on. It was a great presentation and I'm sure that Chhatrapati also is going to enlighten us with something wonderful uh, about the, the, the artistic interventions. Please, Chhatrapati Dattar. Thank you, Mr. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, John Yemel, for initiating this interesting discussion. Thank you, Shomi Dhar. Thank you, Shomi Kalamunda, for joining me. And thank you, Adib Dattu. Uh, being the last speaker, I think I should uh, sort of, on the one hand, uh, take a bit of Johnny's job to sum up the whole thing but I will leave that for Johnny. But uh, before I begin, I think I will just, uh, since uh, Shobik has already brought up uh, uh, issue of intervention, uh, I will just uh, try and speak a few words on that work on uh, Black House, which uh, was a sort of workshop Color Hover and Initiated, where architects, artists, designers were all brought in. Uh, which again itself sort of illustrates the uh, scope created for intervention by institutions. So sort of countering the notion that institutions always are meant or are spaces for restriction of practices, I think there are institutions which can open up uh, ideas, and can uh, really initiate uh, change, and can bring up bring up on um, situations for a new knowledge generation. Uh, Black House, as uh, we found with a group of students that I was working with, um, had a history of its own. It was recited by so many uh, students who were uh, part of Kala Bhavon for uh, more than 50 years. And um, the idea that we came up was to actually sort of create a memory space so we recreated the ground plan of uh, the Black House and we tried to uh, bring back memories of all those who stayed there, though we couldn't get in touch with them, but we uh, sort of substituted it with letters written home uh, by students of Kala Bhavan. So anyway, that was a process and then it ended with a performance. Uh, just to uh, come back to I think where we began with about institutions, just to get a far broader idea about uh, institutions which we have already sort of considered in this evening's discussion as bodies which are too structured. I think uh, it's interesting to understand that institutions are stable, valued, recurring patterns of behavior. Uh, which is very important if we really look at what institution stands for and uh, how this behavior is actually uh, finally conceived and uh, you know brought into action is what finally institution stands for. I think if we look at institutions, the biggest institution that we have had till date uh, uh, amongst all is the institution of religion. I think it has been the biggest and the most influential institution that has molded human civilization till date. What has today substituted religion, or if we want a better word, we can use a belief system or institution of belief systems, then we can say that it is the institution of economy or money. What the rest of it all plays, which are all institutions beginning from all that Johnny mentioned, the family, the school, 
institutions that are, uh, you know, of uh, various capacities uh, that come and go have all been intermediary players between these two main institutions that have constantly uh, molded and uh, sort of created what we understand as our culture today. Um, to really uh, come back to where I uh, practice and how I uh, consider uh, these interventions, I think being part of an institution myself uh, today, um, it is very uh, difficult to uh, really remold an already established pattern of an institution. Uh, today, if we refer back to the history of the Government College of Art and Craft, we will see that there is a certain notion that uh, sort of is overpowering and which exists similarly between all such institutions that have grown during that time and have created uh, or sort of carry that baggage of history with them. And uh, it is extremely difficult to really even uh, convince uh, the bearers of the history of this institution that uh, change is inevitable and change needs to happen. And uh, it, is, uh, it will be my endeavor to see how uh, these changes can be brought about into these institutions. But beyond that, I would like to talk of other institutions which have actually molded most of our uh, contemporary uh, history today, if you are talking of our nation, um, institutions uh, that have often been individually uh, sort of motivated, a uh, group of people who have formed institution. I think uh, the whole history of uh, freedom fighting in India it is a big example of institution building and how institutions have really uh, brought about change um, in our lives and, uh, and history. Uh, but <clears throat> coming to where I begin my practice, I think it was very important to find uh, a sort of a parallel position um, beyond institution, me having been brought up and uh, having been educated in a similarly strong institution and then of course having found a more liberal space at Kolabhavon and having had the opportunity of uh, seeing much more through my various uh, endeavours, I, uh, I found it imperative that it is important that uh, artists find spaces for themselves where uh, it is important whether or not you want to call it an institution, it is important to initiate uh, uh, interventions and one of the interventions which I will place as an example today was uh, initiated by Coach. Coach Kolkata was an organization brought about by uh, individual artists who felt similarly about um, initiating change, about uh, looking at history differently. So one of the things we actually came about uh, during Coach, Coach, Coach's many initiatives was the Bojokhana project, uh, which I had initiated uh, in about 2009, uh, which was basically uh, trying to create a space for a different type of intervention, to create a space where itself, the initial uh, positioning itself would sort of motivate that change. Uh, what I meant initially by saying that institutions can initiate change is basically talking about uh, how you are actually going to change the purpose of the institution, the aesthetics and the bigger vision uh, based on which an institution is created. So whether coach is an institution or not is immaterial in this context, but uh, the intervention was to actually really get into a real space, uh, which possibly is not unique in all of the world, but in Kolkata it was important because uh, at that, even at that time, uh, to find a space within the quote-unquote public spaces is still very difficult. Uh, it has uh, many sort of uh, layers of 
you know, conventions that have to be broken and also sort of social norms that have to be uh, taken into consideration when these spaces are intervened into. So we thought uh, one of the ideas would be to go to agreeable people who lived in old houses of Kolkata, who carried a history with themselves and along with uh, uh, the history, the culture of a time. So this house, which was uh, 90 Bokul Bagan Road, uh, was a space uh, which we began our first Poitokhana project and it was 98 Bukul Bagan Road and I will initially uh, just try to illustrate how um, a space itself sort of uh, brings about uh, certain uh, changes within the mode in which you actually begin to even operate there. So this was the house, uh, it's quite a grand uh, sort of space with uh, lavish uh, uh, staircases, residents of the house and incidentally this a uh, household has been a household of lawyers for over 80 years um, and uh, now of course diversified from uh, their uh, original profession. I mean initially we all know that families had professions of their own. So this was a sort of a lawyer's family, um, solicitors, it was I think called uh, Chodhuri and Chodhuri solicitors which existed for a long time. And uh, so this was the group of artists we got together, uh, we spoke uh, at random uh, through a long period of time with the residents of this house. Uh, we tried to sort of get into the macro and micro realities that we heard from them as well as connected with greater social happenings of which related with the history of this house. And finally we came up with the open studio that lasted only three days, but we worked about six months for it. And uh, so basically, uh, like Shovik, I will not go into the details of the works, but just try to talk about how these interventions actually bring about a scope to look into uh, history differently. Uh, this was a work by Ubijit Gupto, who actually started uh, looking at this house as something that would not exist after some time because that is one of the history, uh, one, of, one of the you know, habits of the city where old houses are vanishing. So he actually uh, envisaged that this house would also come down and a multi-storied building like this, which was basically building blocks would come up. And he collected memories from the residents of this house uh, and sort of recreated these memories within that block of flats. So each window actually talked about uh, the memory of one of its residents and what they thought they would carry back from this house to the new house. So these were actually very uh, tiny spaces created within those boxes so you could peep in and uh, look at these uh, boxes and you could see how each one would talk about one memory which they would carry back to their next house. Um, this was another work by Onradha Patok who based her story on a woman who was the first uh, sort of law, uh, uh, woman lawyer of the Calcutta High Court and based on that history, uh, she created a corner which is basically between the kitchen and the living room a sort of a corner that was neither part of the like outer house nor the other mahal that we would say in the house but she would uh, she used a sort of very personal makeup mirror to put a law book and sort of try and uh, replace a certain reality with a certain notion of womanhood that existed in that house uh, bouquet was by bhoto shutar uh, actually, again, collected documents of this house, uh, especially documents of land and building and their property, uh, out of which she created a bouquet which was uh, initially, uh, which sort of grows out of a barbed wire uh, structure. And you can see the details of the um, scripts and uh, certain historical figures that appeared through those documents. 
and Justice for All was uh, my work, which I had taken on because of uh, from the family history of being lawyers, and uh, uh, I sort of chose uh, Shukumar Rai's text from Hojabaro Law, where there's a very interesting paragraph where he talks about what law is, and finally, actually. It comes to nothing. I mean, it means nothing. I use that as a metaphor for this work and uh, try to trace the history of um, uh, Indian uh, judiciary, I called it, and justice for all. And uh, basically, it started with uh, historical documentation of all the um, alliances, laws, and acts that were brought in by uh, the British supremacy at that time beginning from the subsidiary alliance in 1798 to the doctrine of lapse and each page sort of carried on with the parallel history uh, of uh, India along with the uh, text by Shukumar Rai. So this is how the work looked. I laid it on, on a dining table as if it was part of what that home offered. Uh, prevailing beyond times, Devashish Barui again uh, came up with a work within the room which was filled with uh, law books and uh, he created a replica of the building and actually uh, created uh, strips of photographs where he used a, what we call a grinder, Shilnora, to really ground the house but each time the house would come back to its own position, so trying to talk about the time and strain that each sort of history goes through and practically physically laid there where anybody could come and actually uh, perform the same act of grinding the house and bringing it back to where it was. So uh, I think we'll do with these examples for now. So basically uh, trying to say that uh, institutions are not always uh, quote unquote a bad word. I think it's time that we refigure institution and initiate institution in a way which can become more meaningful in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Chitravati. That was really a great uh, intervention, visual intervention. I think like this, this, this was an exhibition uh, held in Delhi also. This, this exhibition came to Delhi? No, no, no. no, no. This was on that side. Yeah, because I, I have seen these documents elsewhere. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> so according to Chhatrapati, institutions are not really a bad word, not necessarily be a bad word, and we could always intervene and make. We can I intervene within the I institution and make it more liberal, uh, etc. So I'll just uh, make four lines as summing up the four you know presentations, and then we will open the uh, you know the, the session for questions and answers. So Vinidhar talked about a total policy change in reforming the curriculum so that art could be an integral part of our educational uh, system, and that is very example she she underlined the need for changing the curriculum. Adib very interestingly put the real and the manufactured space. Actually, against the real, often we say the imagined space, but manufactured space, and I was remembering the manufacturing of uh, the, the, the Gramscian concept of manufacturing the, the, the concept. So, uh, there, is, there is always art going into certain spaces, which automatically become Elite, elitist in a way. Most of the galleries, especially the private galleries in Delhi and Bombay, uh, have changed their you know admission process totally, to totally. I mean, they revolutionized in a way, but in a in a reverse sense. Now anybody cannot walk into. You need certain kind of permission. You need to you know switch the calling bell and then, then somebody will open. 
So there is no walking into. Maybe the private gallery, the notion of private gallery itself is a private space. It is not really a public space. Whereas we have other other institutions like Jahangir Art Gallery or you know Lilith Kala Academies or something like that. You rightly pointed out the Academy of, uh, of Fine Arts. Chhatrapati's intervention is actually going counter to that. Like uh, he is taking the or coach rather is taking the art into the elite spaces. You know, once upon a time, those houses, houses were very private and uh, elitist in a way. So art could actually go back and intervene in the, uh, you know, former elitist spaces. And the Swami very beautifully presented how a benevolent institution could actually still function in our society. Especially when the reality in most of the universities is this, that huge amount of regimentation is happening. Most of the teachers are vying for positions and most of the students are actually fighting with the teachers in order to find some space or, you know, even campus are, uh, you know, the, 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 the freedom within the campus or the space within the uh, campuses are shrinking. Not by the external influences, but by a kind of auto-censoring by the authorities. In that case, I believe Shantini Kedan still has, still offers a lot of possibilities and Chhatrapati with, as the new principal of a great institution is trying his very best to open up a liberal space within the institutions. So these are the four proposals and pro, four you know, ideas that uh, have been presented today evening. Uh, we can have another eight to ten minutes for question and answers. Anybody could start. Please, please make the question in very, very small words, small, small sentences. Don't make a statement. The problem of the all institutions in India is that we are the followers of the Western countries, that is British colonization. That spoil the whole institutions of India. And we are traveling in such a way that we follow the Western countries all types of visions. So, uh, Chhatrapati represented all things in his own way, but this installation art spoiled the whole Indian concept of art. That's why institutions should try their best and the teachers should try their best to install their innovative art of the student to develop their own to their innovative imaginations of the country. This is my suggestion. Yeah, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Anything more? Good evening. Actually, my first question is, I'd like to know this, uh, what we are uh, talking about, we're discussing about, is it only the, uh, only talking about art institution? Means uh, institutional intervention, is it only about art institution or for any institution as a whole? So that's my first question. Uh, what is it all about? Then if it is not only for art institutions, so I'd like to know a, what I felt in today's world, what I felt, media intervention, which is affecting the culture most. And uh, to some extent, it is destroying our culture. But uh, I have hardly seen any initiative from uh, anyone, from any organization, any government side. Okay, so I think it should be taken. And uh, this matter should be looked into very seriously because the way it's running, if it continues, um, we are going to see a very bad days in the future. So, if anyone, if sir has to take a, has to tell anything about it, uh, about media intervention, intervention, which is uh, very serious. So, I'd like to listen uh, to, uh, uh, I'd like to listen to something about it from your side, if you have any opinion about it. And then I have one more question. That what uh, Sioshi Ma'am's uh, training I'm saying, uh, now the art classes are cutting off nowadays. But actually I started in Bengali medium when I was in school. I started in Bengali medium. Now I'm teaching in uh, central school. So I have seen, what I have seen in my time, also there was no art class. It was SUBW. Now it is there. 
But as ma'am said, we don't have the proper infra infrastructure. It is there for name said. Okay. Now in private school also, if you go to private school, you see the students are learning. Now the awareness is more. Now in areas also, in our local areas also, see children are going to art classes, children are learning this and that, lot of things. But this is only for name said. But the true spirit is not being developed. In school also, also I have seen, it's my experience, the children are learning and we don't have proper infrastructure, which should be inculcated in them uh, for better future for the months uh, for our, um, for campaigning of art, which is very much important, which is missing in this world, I believe. In uh, what I have seen in uh, in India, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, you have to say if you have anything to say, I would like to listen. First of all, first of all, yeah, I can clarify because any institution, any institution, any intervention. Because if there is an institution, there is intervention, always. Actually, the discussion was totally about the art institution. Yes, we are sitting in Burla Academy and this is the 50th anniversary, 51st annual exhibition. So we are in an art context. So because if you have listened to my preamble, I was talking institution in general. But our parents are actually talking about art because they are art experts. Yeah. I just want to add, uh, you were talking of media intervention, which is spoiling culture. I think I think uh, we can make a little shift in the way we are looking at it. I think you should also consider how media is creating culture by itself. So that is a parallel sort of culture. And it is about one culture sort of being overtaken by or, you know, uh, clashing or coexisting with other cultures. So, I don't think you should see media as part of something that is coming and sitting on culture's head and eating it up. I think today media itself is part of the culture we live in, it's part of our lives. It's about how we can change the intervention or the pattern of the intervention. Possibly that is what you are suggesting or talking about. What we are supposed to do to see the changes? Yeah. Like I said, uh, there are two institutions which I think are most powerful. One being the institution of faith or religion, second the institution of economic. With, in today's world, if there is an institution of economic which is running something, it is very difficult for the individual to intervene and bring about change. But as we said, we can have small initiatives, we can start talking about it definitely. But do we have to look after the moral growth of the students? That's a real problem of the own universe. Yeah, uh, perhaps, yeah, what I wanted to mention with my very basic, you know, idea is uh, for a child that is so very necessary and that can only be inculcated from the school days. And what I feel that if a child really develops with all his imagination and creativity, automatically that very person later will create a proper balanced society also. So art is something which helps us to nurture the ruchi, the aesthetics. And that is what we are lacking today, and that is where the imbalance is being created in our society. So I always believe in nurturing things from the very grassroots level, from the very seed, which later will be branching out into a big tree. So, so, so what I want to say is, so what we can do? to bring about these changes from our point, from our side? What we can Actually, for us, what we need to do is introduce a kind of art practice right from the school days where we can give a lot of liberty to the child to express his, imagi his or her imagination. But today what we are doing, we have various art classes, as we know, where Xerox copies or photocopies are being distributed and where they are being asked to just fill them up with colors. So that is not how art should be, as we all know. Imposing our ideas on exactly. And that idea, and that kind of an idea, is very much means creating a kind of, uh, what to say, a lacune between the understanding of art and art appreciation. That we need to be conscious about, and perhaps in future we need to think of something which will help us to, you know, mend such ideas. No, uh, one more thing, sir, madam, you have said, uh, uh, in your time and in your yes. time, what are the changes you see in art practice? When in school level, if you see. Uh, in in speaking, I was very fortunate to have my entire training in Shantini Ketan right from the schools where nature was part of my great teacher. And along with that, you know, I had great teachers who helped us 
to means uh, nurture our creativity. So I just cannot take back to my days because my experience was extremely good in that. Sense. No, we, 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 will, we, will, we, will, we will continue the conversation maybe over a cup of tea. Uh, we will take one more question because it's already 8 o'clock. Uh, then we will wind up the program, if, if any questions. Yeah, there is one more question. Last, last line. What conclusion is that all institutions of the Cheton Chaitan is hidden movie. That's why we have to end up on that Hello. Hello. Your idea is that that incision. All incisions are the Bengali in Bengali say the Cheton Chaitan is region movie. School, university, and all types of that. Uh, sir, so we have to think about that. Sir, sir, there is a question from the last row. We will take that question. I want to add in the conversation. Just I wanted to add in the conversation that not only a particular kind of art practice should be implemented in the school level. Actually, because when we think of art as the very different, a particular subject to be taught, it becomes the job becomes different and difficult to. Because see, in, suppose we take the example of a subject history. The, the option of questioning the teachers about the history is very limited. It is like, we, talk, we talked about the museum spaces. It is like museum spaces. The desks of the schools are like the vitrines of the museum, basically. Because we are not, we are not taught to question what we are being taught. We, the, a bunch of facts and informations are basically display and here the actually the task become very different because art is very much intrinsic to how we think and artists as the panelists told that it is not about drawing or copying something it is about to question and observe and this ability of questioning and observing is not being practiced either in the school levels and also in most of the even art institutions in fact, major art institutions, because I am pursuing my masters and I have my friends in many art institutions and the, the difference between the cultural difference or the contradiction of uh, between teachers and students are still there. Thank you. Yeah, what you said is very, very pertinent a question and it is, it needs to be, you know, nurtured because that questioning part truly is hardly offered because it is always what we try to, you know, this regimentation is there, syllabus oriented study, and we are always running with a course pattern. It is very true, but I don't think so. It is very easy to create such a policy in the near future, isn't it so? So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much, Chitrapati and Shaumik and Adil Dattam. From my personal side and officially Shikhadi will please Shikhadi Shikhadi has been a pillar of strength and she has wonderfully organized this program thank you Shikhadi thank you Sohini Chattaputi Shomi Gaudi and Johnny and thank you all the audience please and, and please join us in the team and the outside <laughs>